Good morning again, everyone. Good to see you as always. It's always a beautiful day to praise God. Even though today had its first frost, I still think it's a beautiful day. And today we are celebrating All, All Saints Day. I know it's a little late, but it's never too late to look at all the people that have gone before us. Uh, last night was a beautiful day with All Souls, and I hope you had a chance to join us for that. We're going to be singing a little extra today in honor of All Saints Day. So we're going to start with 276 for All the Saints. Um, if you don't have a, a blue book, I think Jean and Jeff have an extra one beside them. There's two extra ones there. Yeah, if you want to. And what verses are we singing in? We're singing verses one for all the saints, six, the golden evening, seven, but low their breaks, and eight, from earth's wide bounds. So one, six, seven, one, eight. six, seven, and eight. Okay. It's not uh, 276. It's on, it's on the board. Yes. yes so. You'll see all the hymns right up there. It's on the board. board so. Yeah. Oh. No worry. No, it's, it's done. We use it on Wednesday, but I don't think we use it on Sunday. So. No. Oops. service continues on page 67 in the Book of Common Prayer. And let us pray together the collect. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no things are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee, and wordly magnify thy holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself, on these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. 
Lord, have mercy upon us, and write both these thy laws in our hearts, we beseech thee. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, who has knit together thine elect in one communion and fellowship in the mystical body of the Son of thy Son Jesus Christ, our Lord, grant us grace so to follow thy blessed saints in all virtuous and godly living, that we may come to those unspeakable joys which thou hast prepared for them that unfeignedly love thee through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I'd like to invite Jean to come forward and do the first reading. I beheld, and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues stood before the throne and before the Lamb clothed with white robes and palms in their hands and cried with loud voices, saying, Salvation to our God, which sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb. And all the angels stood around about the throne and about the elders and the four living creatures and fell before the throne on their faces and worshiped God, saying, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be unto our God forever and ever. Amen. And one of the elders answered, saying unto me, What are these which are arrayed in white robes? And whence came they? And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said to me, These are they which came out of great tribulation, and have washed their robes, and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore are, are they before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he that sitteth on the throne shall dwell among them. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more. Neither shall the sun light on them nor any heat. For the lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them and shall lead them unto living fountains of waters, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. Here endeth the first lesson. We'll continue our reading through Psalm 19. And that's uh, with part seven, eight, and nine. And that's on page 488. We'll say it responsively after the whole verse. Part seven, eight, nine on page 488. O oh, think upon thy word as concerning thy servant, wherein thou hast caused me to put my trust. Same is my comfort in my trouble, for thy word hath quickened me. The proud have had me exceedingly in derision, yet have I not shrinked from thy law. For I remembered thine everlasting judgments, O Lord, and received comfort. Horror hath taken hold of me because of the ungodly that forsake thy law. 
Thy statutes have been my songs in the house of my pilgrimage. I have thought upon thy name, O Lord, in the night season, and have kept thy law. This I have had, because I kept thy precepts. Thou art my portion, O Lord. I have promised to keep thy words. I made my humble petitions in thy presence with my whole heart. O be merciful unto me according to thy word. I called mine own ways to remembrance and turned my feet unto thy testimonies. I made haste and prolonged not the time to keep thy commandments. The cords of the ungodly have encompassed me, but I have not forgotten thy law. At midnight I will rise to give thanks unto thee because of thy righteous judgments. I am a companion of all them that fear thee and keep thy precepts. The earth, O Lord, is full of thy mercy. O teach me thy statutes. O Lord, thou hast dealt graciously with thy servant according unto thy word. O teach me true understanding and knowledge, for I have believed thy commandments. Before I was troubled, I went wrong, but now have I kept thy word. Thou art good and gracious. O teach me thy statutes. The proud have imagined a lie against me, but I will keep thy precepts with my whole heart. Their heart is as fat as brawn, but my delight hath been in thy law. It is good for me that I have been in trouble, that I may learn thy statutes. The law of thy mouth is drear than thousands of gold and silver. Kathy, would you come up? Would you please stand for the gospel reading? For those that want to follow along, the gospel reading is found on page 300 in the Book of Common Prayer. The gospel is written to St. Matthew 5. Jesus, seeing the multitudes, went up into a mountain. And when he was set, his disciples came unto him. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye, when men shall revile, revile you and persecute you, and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice, and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Let's just take a moment of prayer. Lord God, we thank you for this great cloud of witnesses that encompass us, that show us the way forward that have fought the good fight and so have used their lives to point us towards you. Lord God, may we hold your way in our heart. May we hold your word. May we strive for it. And may we follow these saints into your glorious presence where every tear is wiped away, where you feed us, you give us, you lead us to drink. Lord God, help us to persevere in your word. Amen. So today's All Saints Day. Well, two days ago. But we're looking at All Saints Day and a little bit of All Souls Day. 
one of the things that we think about the saints is about faithfulness. They held firm to their faith. But one of the things we don't often think about faithfulness is the other side of it. It's not just about this mental assent to something that we fully can't understand and prove. But the other side of it is being faithful, is persevering in that understanding and that belief, no matter what comes. When we look back at some of the greatest saints, that's what they did. They went through some of the hardest times, and yet they persevered. There's nothing proving that they would get out the other side, that they would get out of persecution, that they'd come out alive. Some didn't. There's nothing proving that they would enjoy eternity with God, and yet, oftentimes in life, they saw it. God is a faithful God, and he continually meets us out of the other side, in this life and in the next. We get a vision of that in Revelation, which I'll touch on soon. But the promise comes to us first in that passage from Matthew, which, if you don't know, begins the Sermon on the Mount. The Sermon on the Mount is this great talk <laughs> where Jesus shows himself to be the greater Moses. Once again, he's on top of a mountain, and he's starting to show people the way, the way forward, even greater than the law that went before them. And so the beatitude frames it all. This is who we are meant to be as Christians. Every one of these is a challenge to faithfulness, to living a just and right life. So I want to start there. Because each of these Beatitudes challenges us in a way that the world doesn't challenge. So it starts off with, Blessed are the poor in spirit. There's a humility here. We are not here recognizing our own righteousness that we have all the capacity to do all of these wonderful things, but instead that we depend on God's Spirit. And we do. He will show up again and again. And if you're anything like me, I fall short again and again. And I need God. And the beautiful thing is that when we depend on Him and His Spirit, he promises us his kingdom, the kingdom of heaven that is greater than anything else. So it starts with humility. And then it leads to blessed are they who mourn. Last night we celebrated All Souls Day, which we recognized we have a lot to mourn. But it doesn't you don't have to look too far to realize that there is a lot to mourn. This world consistently is a place that leads us to mourn. If you're like me, and my heart is broken for the things that break the heart of God. And they're all around us. Whether it's racism, injustice, but so many things, even beyond the big isms that go wrong day to day, the people that are hopeless, the people that don't see a way forward, the people that reject God, there is so much to mourn. And yet the thing is, is that God meets us in that mourning. And when we truly see what is wrong, we could truly see what God is setting right. The work that he is doing to reshape all of it. Only when we truly mourn can we be truly comforted. Can we truly be joyful? Because otherwise it's just this numbing milieu 
that so many people live in. Blessed are the meek. Again, it roots in that humility. But it's also about looking at others and seeing how you might lift them up as well. Meekness is not about making yourself less, be about becoming a doormat, as is often expressed in popular culture. But it's about how do we lift others up? How do we see the height of God and praise him in that? And we hear in that we shall inherit the earth. It's not the ones that are tyrants or have power in this world, but it's those that use what they have to lift up others that will create the earth that God wants in the time to come. So they have their place in that. We can have our place in that. Blessed are they that thirst, hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. There's a whole lot that people hunger after and thirst after in this world. But is it really righteousness? Is it justice? I'd say most of the time it's not. Even with popular culture's sort of um, uh, milieu over justice, that's not the right word, but the striving for justice, oftentimes it's not always about it. I think it's really good what we're pointed towards, and that's right. But so often it is led with guilt, with violence, with struggling against one another rather than really looking how we can partner. It's one of the struggles I have today, and I can't say I know the way forward, but I pray continuously on it, and I'm trusting God to find the right way forward of how do we work together? How do we do that humbly lifting one another up in meekness? But when we strive after the things of God, when we hunger for the things of God, that's when he will fill it. Blessed are they who are persecuted for righteousness sake. It's not easy to be different than this world. Like I said on Sunday, we will meet walls consistently, if not fists. But just like the saints that have gone before us, if we strive in this, if we are faithful, not only will we see the other side, but God will use it. While I was praying last night on All Souls Day, something struck me after we listed those names. I have the privilege in this ministry to uh, accompany a lot of people as they're dying and as they're mourning. And one of the amazing things is that there is such amazing people in this church that have gone before us. And I have met so many, and I am thankful to so many. And it's not often that we realize what a great cloud of witnesses we have living right beside us. That we have paving our way, showing us such an amazing world and such an amazing community that we have promised that we are already building right now. It is a gift in this world to have what such wonderful saints that live and have died for us and for Christ. And if you're anything like me, when you think of them, it's not always with tears of sadness, but it's also joy. Praising God for the wonders he is already doing and for the wonders that are promised to us. That now these 
little answers are just the temporary fulfillment of the promise that will be even greater than we can imagine. So if we strive like those who have gone before us, there's a way in which we pave the way. A way in which we show the way for those that are coming after. And a way in which we are already building that time when we will come to him and our hearts will be filled with such joy at just coming before the presence of God that we can't help but praise and worship him. That our joy will overflow and we'll be like all those saints and angels that we'll meet there singing, Holy, holy, holy. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Amen. Our service continues on page 71 with the Creed. Please stand. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of the Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, through whom all things are made, who for us and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of the Father, and he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. And they came, everyone whose heart stirred him up, and everyone whom his spirit made willing, and they brought the Lord's offering. Exodus thirty-five twenty-one. And our hymn for this offertory time is hymn 439, and that is... Blessed are the pure in heart. Thank you. For they shall see our God. Say that again. For they shall see our God. Mm -hmm. Oh, I skipped that one. Thank you. Yes. Yes. (laughs) Anyway, we'll see how we go playing.
Blessed be thou, Lord God of Israel, forever and ever. All that is in the heaven and the earth is thine. All things come of thee, and of thine own have we given thee. Amen. Please take a position of prayer. Let us pray for Christ's holy Catholic Church. Let us pray for peace on earth and for the unity of all Christian people. Let us pray for our missionaries at home and abroad. Let us remember before God those of our brethren who have departed this life and are at rest. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church militant here in earth. Almighty and ever-living God, who by thy holy apostles has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all people, we humbly beseech thee most mercifully to accept our alms and oblations and to receive these our prayers which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord. And grant that all that all they that do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. We beseech thee also to lead all nations in the way of righteousness, and so to guide and direct their governors and rulers, that thy people may enjoy the blessings of freedom and peace. And grant unto thy servant Elizabeth our Queen, and to all that are put in authority under her, that they may truly and impartially administer justice to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops, priests, and deacons. Pray especially for Linda, Anne, Andrew, Mark, Merv, Gail, and myself that we may both by our life and doctrine set forth thy true and living word and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacrament. Prosper, we pray thee, all those who proclaim the gospel of thy kingdom among the nations. To all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor all them who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. I invite you to share those names now. Merv, Don H. Yeah. Nestor, Naz. We remember before thee, O Lord, all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear. And we bless thy holy name for all who in life and death have glorified thee, beseeching thee to give us grace, that rejoicing in their fellowship, we may follow their good examples, and with them be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake our only mediator and advocate, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. I'd like to just take a few moments of silence now for you to remember anyone uh, that you have lost, whether it's recent or gone by. And if you'd like, there is a taper um, beside, and you're free to light a candle in memory and honor of them.
memory of all those that have showed their way, showed the way forward. Let us follow their example and turn back to God. So ye that do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins and are in love and charity with your neighbor and intend to lead the new life following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth in his holy ways. Draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament to your comfort and make your humble confessions to Almighty God meekly in any position of prayer. Saying together, Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all people, we acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake. Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all them that with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what comfortable words our Savior Christ saith unto all that truly turn to him. Come unto me all that labor and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, to the end that all that believed in him should not perish but have eternal life. Hear also what St. Paul saith. This is a true saying and worthy of all to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear also what St. John saith. If anyone sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty, everlasting God, creator and preserver of all things who in the multitude of thy saints has compassed us about with so great a cloud of witnesses that we rejoicing in their fellowship may run with patience the race that is set before us and together with them may receive the crown of glory that fadeth not away. Therefore with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven we laud and magnify thy glorious name evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord Most High. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessing and glory and thanksgiving be unto thee, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to take our nature upon him and to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made thereby his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memorial of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O most merciful Father. We most humbly beseech thee, and grant that we, receiving these thy creatures of bread and wine, according to thy Son, our Savior Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. Who in the na same night that he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, thank you, Lord, he broke it. 
and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And after he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as often as ye drink it in memory of me. Wherefore, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, we thy humble servants with all thy holy church, remembering the precious death of thy beloved Son, his mighty resurrection and his glorious ascension, and looking for his coming again in glory, do make before thee in this sacrament of the holy bread of eternal life and the cup of everlasting salvation the memorial which he hath commanded. And we entirely desire thy fatherly goodness mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by thy merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and your faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all of the benefits of his passion. And we pray that by the power of thy Holy Spirit, all we who are partakers of this holy communion may be fulfilled with thy grace and heavenly benediction through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world, grant us peace. of Christ, broken for you. body of Christ, broken for you. Kathy, the body of Christ, broken for you. Jean, the body of Christ, broken for you. Jeff, the body of Christ, broken for you. 
Page 85, we continue in prayer as we pray this prayer Jesus Christ himself taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Almighty. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank thee that thou dost graciously feed us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ assuring us thereby of thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are living members of his mystical body, which is the blessed company of all faithful people. We are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls, and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee. And although we are unworthy, Yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Our closing hymn is hymn 282, and that is Let Saints on Earth in Concert Sing. Thank you.
Thank you, everyone. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Hmm. <laughs>